Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Apologies to those of you who like my videos, those few people who like my videos because uh, I'm not making these very often. I'm just not finding the time. But thank you again, once again, to all the subscribers and the viewers. This video is part two of a video I made last year. That video is the B-58 under the bonnet guide because I felt it wasn't complete and also included a couple of errors. So this video will make up for that. Some of you asked if the steering column is on this side in both left-hand side and right-hand side vehicles. No, this is a right-hand drive vehicle and therefore the steering column is on this side. If you have a left-hand drive vehicle, then your steering column will be on this side. Consequently, the hydraulic fluid tank that's on this side will actually be on this side and some of the hardware that's on this side will be on the opposite side. Speaking of which, here we have our braking system pump. And if we remove this, just to show you what this looks like underneath, these just rotate in to release it. And you rotate them out to reclamp under here. Anyway, here you have a fuse box. And here's a look at the braking system pump. Over here, we have our servicing ports for the air conditioning system. And on the bonnet, you should have a label that tells you what refrigerant is used to service the uh, air conditioning ports. One of them is the high pressure port and the other one is the low pressure port. So uh, this is a hoist point. There's one here and one in the back. And that's what you would use to lift the engine out of the car. Over here, we've got the wiper fluid filler cap, but the wiper fluid tank is actually here in the fender, uh, behind the fender. So it's not in the engine bay, it's actually outside the engine bay here on the side. Here we have the supply to the wiper fluid sprayers there on the bonnet. The snorkel, which uh, feeds air into the intake muffler box is here in the front. The starter is not visible on this car. That's because it is, uh, aft looking forward, is on the right hand side behind the turbocharger. It's not easy. You can't see it, but it's somewhere over, over there. It's concealed. The engine identification plate, your part number and your serial number, is over there behind the charge pipe. So in the last video, I said I didn't know what this was. This is the engine oil fill cap, but I don't know what this other cap next to it is. Uh, that's part of the PCV system, the positive crankcase ventilation system. Much of what I'm about to say, I learned from a Kern 417 video. So I do not deserve credit for what I'm about to say. And you guys should go and watch his video for more details on this system. I'll give you the gist of it. Obviously, there's a combustion chamber, the six cylinders, there's a combustion chamber and they create huge pressures as they ignite the fuel air mixture. Some of those gases flow past the piston rings into the crankcase underneath and that increase in pressure in the crankcase needs to be relieved. So that air is, is diverted through a rudimentary de-oiler or air oil separator and that air goes through this tube into the intake pipe. So that's very, very, uh, in summary, how it works. Kern 417 has a more detailed video and it would be dishonorable of me to regurgitate everything that he said. So you guys should go to his channel, watch his more detailed video, and if you like it, subscribe to his channel. Another thing to point out, this tube here is the tube that brings fuel from the tank in the back to the fuel pump over here, the high pressure fuel pump underneath that noise insulation. This cable here is connected to the, is connected to the latches here. 
So this is when you pull the, the release mechanism, the bonnet release lever inside the car. This is what it what it's attached to. And these are basically just simple cables. They split off here. One goes to the latch on the left hand side and one goes to the latch on the right hand side after looking forward. Somebody asked about the water pumps in the B58 engine. As far as I know, there are three of them. There is the, the main pump down here connected to the serpentine belt. That is a mechanically driven pump, an engine driven pump. It controls the flow of the main engine coolant. So that's the fluid in this expansion tank and the engine radiator, which is the, the aft radiator here. There is an auxiliary electric water pump down there. That's the silver looking one down there. And that is connected to the intercooler coolant circuit, the low temperature coolant circuit. That is a dedicated uh, system, flows through the intercooler and the radiator here in the front. And the third pump, it is somewhere back there. I cannot see it if I'm honest, but it, it's back there. That's a second electrical auxiliary water pump that assists in the flow of coolant to the turbocharger. The coolant to the turbocharger is uh, related to the main engine coolant, so the main tank. In the case of my car, the horn is, is down here behind this, uh, this blocked off piece of trim here. Obviously on the other side, I have my auxiliary radiator. I'll get to that in a second, but on this side I have nothing. If you have an OPF car, this will be opened up. There will be a grill here. I do not know where the horn is in that case. It might be located differently, but in a non-OPF car, it's behind here. In my previous video, I said this was an oil cooler radiator, but that is not correct. This has nothing to do with uh, oil cooler. Uh, this is an auxiliary radiator to the engine radiator. This is an extra radiator that assists the main radiator in cooling down the coolant. I don't have it in this vehicle, but some of you may have silver fins on the top of your headlights. Those are heat sinks and they are obviously to dissipate heat from the headlight. In this case, there are none, at least on the top. You may have one or you may have two heat sinks on top of your headlights. And that depends on what systems you, you've spec'd for your headlights. For example, you may have adaptive headlights, which I believe will give you one heat sink, or you may have automatic high beam assist system spec for your car which may give you a second heat sink that's it guys this is part two i don't know if there will be a part three but if there are things in the engine bay that you would like me to clarify i would be more than happy to do so see you in the next one